So I'm going to talk today about optical standing waves. And these are important in uh, several areas of science and technology. One of them is in optical lithography, which is when you use an optical standing wave in optical lithography, it's called interference lithography. And another area in metrology, people use them to measure spacings or to make measurements as, uh, to make sensors and also uh, people use them in atomic physics to cool atoms and trap atoms so there's there's a whole host of applications of these things and so I wanted to explain first of all just what they are um, and then to talk a little bit about how you can understand them so first of all what they are well it's just a dependence of intensity on position optical intensity on position. Uh, the intensity goes to zero at the points called the antinodes. And the intensity uh, is, sorry, at the points called the nodes. And the intensity goes to maximum at the antinodes. And in between, it has this sort of cosinusoidal variance. And uh, I think it's important to understand the distinction between the electric field and the intensity, although I don't really explain, I don't really, not really planning to explain it fully here, um, but uh, at least the characteristic of it is the intensity is the power uh, that is transmitted per area. So that's uh, intensity. But if you look at electric field, Uh, the, although the intensity is stable in time, the electric field varies in time. So uh, if at time zero the electric field looks like that, sometime later, half the optical period later, uh, the electric field points in the opposite direction. So if it was positive, so if it was pointing up here, uh, sometime later it'll be pointing down. And that's true all of the antinodes. At the nodes it's always zero. So it's independent of time in the nodes. But at the antinodes, it varies in time. Even though the field varies in time, uh, that's telling you that if you put a charge there, it would feel an alternating force up and down. The optical intensity, uh, which is the power going through the na uh, per area, uh, that ha uh, time average is uh, constant. So I want to give now what I think is a unusual sort of way of looking at optical standing waves, but one that I find very intuitive because at least when I learned about interference, I learned about it from the double slit experiment. And so uh, that's the context I put it in. So in the double slit experiment, what uh, you think of is an optical source, which is a plane wave. So these are uh, wave fronts of equal phase. And uh, you have two slits. Uh, they're separated by some distance d. And in the far field, there's a screen. And uh, what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to make a standing wave on the screen. And that's actually exactly what comes out of the double slit calculation. So if you remember your the, the double slit experiment, uh, when you have, I should mention actually, this is a really cool experiment. You can do it yourself if you just have a laser pointer and some transparency film. You put it through a laser printer, use a PowerPoint slide to make two slits really close to each other. Um, I, I did it with a wedge so that they get closer and closer and closer together so that you can kind of vary the slit width and uh, the slit separation. And you take a laser pointer, and you shine it on there, and you can see the diffraction pattern in the far field if you have a dark enough room. Uh, it's kind of a fun and simple experiment to do on your own. Uh, but if you look at the pattern in the far field, you actually get a cosinusoidal standing wave in the far field. And it varies from nodes, uh, antinodes. I didn't draw these exactly at zero, so that's uh, zero intensity there. Um, it varies uh, with a period P. And the reason it varies is because the different path lengths of these two rays uh, goes in and out of 
phase with each other so cause the ray the field from the two rays to go in and out and phase with each other uh, and they go through one cycle every time the phase difference is lambda if you uh, remember your basic uh, physics from from when you first saw the double slit if this is the first time you're seeing the double slit this is not an adequate description of the double slit experiment so you're going to need to go somewhere else for a treatment of the double slit experiment um, but uh, if you hopefully remember the the result you basically take uh, this period uh, divided by L and that defines uh, a triangle that's here and here and you notice that that's similar to the triangle uh, or approximately similar to the triangle uh, lambda over D so uh, we can rearrange that and uh, conclude that P is uh, approximately lambda over uh, d over l well but d over l is also approximately uh, twice the sine of this half angle and there's a little bit of trigonometry there uh, you can either trust me about it or uh, you can work it out for yourself uh, but that reduces to two sine theta Okay, so, and that's the half angle. So just to be clear, that's the bisecting line here. We def that's how we define data. So, now we've got a standing wave, we've got the period. It seems like we're all done, but in fact, generally that's not the way people make optical standing waves. Generally, the way people make an optical standing wave is they take a laser, they use an optical element of beam splitter to split it in two. They then use mirrors to recombine the two lasers and lo and behold they see an interference pattern uh, where the two beams uh, recombine. And that's a little different from what the experiment I just described here. So the way I want uh, to just to explain the equivalence is to understand that when you have a simple slit and you illuminate it with a plane wave, so I'm going to draw it illuminated from above with a plane wave, um, the field coming out of that slit ends up looking like a cylindrical wave. So these wave fronts, these are lines of equal phase. I'll draw as that Greek symbol phi for the phase. And, uh, and if you go far enough away, these lines have very slight curvature and they start to look like a plane wave and that's approximately what the field due to a laser looks like. Okay. So you can think of, okay in this case these are two fields reflecting off of a, reflecting off of mirrors but if in the far field they result in plane waves that are approaching each other with a certain angle well it's going to be very very hard to distinguish that and it's going to be impossible for the field uh, to distinguish that from the case of plane waves that originated from two slits that happen to have the same half angle of separation. Okay, so these two problem, these two situations are equivalent. And as a consequence, the equation that we derived up here, lambda over two sine theta, applies to this case where you've taken a single laser, split it in half, and, and recombined it. So let me just do sort of one extreme example for you, which is a case where theta is equal to 90 degrees uh, or pi over 2. So what is that? That's basically where you have a, a field coming in from one side and a field coming in from the other. And uh, because the bisecting angle here is 90 degrees. And in that case, if theta is 90 degrees, then sine theta is equal to 1. And remember the formula was the period is equal to lambda over 2 sine theta, which is uh, equal to lambda over 2. So if, uh, let's take a typical laser wavelength uh, for these new blue diode lasers, you can use a 4 or 5 nanometer nanometer is a billionth of a meter, so 405 is a typical optical wavelength, very, very small 
distances and we can plug into that and you get that the period is approximately 100 nanometers. And that's the period when I mentioned earlier that we can use these to do optical lithography uh, there we're interested in the feature size which is actually the half period and so we write HP for half period uh, sorry period is 200 nanometers 405 divided by 2 good um, so the period is approximately 100 nanometers half period is approximately 100 nanometers so you can make uh, very, very small features uh, with a pretty simple experiment. And this situation where the counter-propagating wave is actually really easy to make, um, you just take a laser and you put a mirror, basically, in its path, uh, then the laser is reflected, and uh, the incoming beam and the reflected beam interfere with each other, and you get uh, the standing wave. Okay, well, uh, that's all for today. I'd really appreciate any comments people have below, especially if you have questions or feedback about what would make these videos useful. Uh, they'd be very welcome.